get back to where it all began the purpose of night by the sand the great outdoors it's a bit of a strange term we've coined up when you really think about it the great outdoors like it's such a pity that we have to be closed in behind these so mentioned doors that only open and close on special occasions like a long weekend or that little pat on the back at the end of the year where your boss is kind enough to keep depositing a sum of money into your bank account while you're off on some kind of annual adventure to an overcrowded campsite while you cheers with your mates over how much time your new job gives you off over Chrissy. What did we call it before we ever lived in overpopulated suburbs and cities, I wonder? I suppose there wasn't a name for it. We did it. There's something about being out here that speaks to me. I come here on my own to hike for hours without passing another person, but it's funny because I don't feel alone out here. In fact, it's actually the opposite. I return to civilization and I'm surrounded by people, save for a few, who I feel don't really have that connection to these places like I do. To them, these places are only visited on rare occasions. Work is far more important. Having a big night is far more important. And that is where I feel alone. Surrounded by people. Not here. There's a cockatoo nest right in that branch. This dark one here, it's hollow. Well, this surpasses what I expected. <laughs> We're free now, let's, uh, let's give some stones, eh? Edit that out. Skipping a bunch of stones can be therapeutic. Maybe it just feels that way because if you have the time to be doing something like this then you're obviously not in a rush to be anywhere anytime soon. I think if I were to trace back every moment in time that I've skipped stones, it would mark some of the best ages in my life. Yes. <laughs> There's something about a perfectly skipped stone that says, alright mate, you can crack on with your day now. You've done it. It makes no sense to me that you know, you guys are all at work right now. Five days a week to, you know, buy a loaf of bread and a few beers and have some shelter over your head. And this is out here all the time. Being out here instantly changes your perspective. I feel just as important or maybe insignificant as any of the birds, reptiles or marsupials I see in the bush around me. Crazy. It feels right. The balance is perfect. We lack balance in society. We aim to win at everything we do and touch. I love being out here. It's like a slap in the face and a welcome home hug all at the same time. It says, sit down and learn something. Observe something without necessarily participating. These places always stir up insightful thoughts and philosophical wisdom. It's part of why I enjoy it so damn much. Stunning, hey. Absolutely stunning. Tell you what, nothing out here is easy. You throw a camera in the mix and you are doing yourself a disservice, I'll tell you that much for free. I cannot explain how good it feels to be out here. You know, lockdown was one thing, but then, because I was still working, I'm on the road a lot. So when um, lockdown started to lift, <laughs> everybody's out on the road again, and oh, it's just insane out there. And then you come out somewhere like this, just peaceful and quiet. 
Just hits you different, mate. Just, just hits you different. Game changer, son. I should just camp here. Truly. People don't like to be uncomfortable. I hope to never be that way. I can't think of anything worse than living the rest of my days comfortably. You experience the most growth when you're pushed outside of that comfort zone. I can personally vouch for that. That's when you're living. Maybe a quick fish over in these rapids. Nice big patch of sun to dry the boots and socks out in. Tackle box. It's actually just my little survival tin tackle box. Um, the tins from Survival Supplies Australia and I got flint and steel with that but I've used this to pop my little lures and stuff in. Let's see how we go. Time to show you why I uh, earned the trophy for most legendary fisherman in the southern hemisphere. Because I'm a natural baby. Everybody knows only cool guys rock telescopic rods, so. Probably shut the bow arm. Oh. Bloody hell, it's an ordeal just to get the bloody lure in the water. All good things take time though. I've got plenty of that. Fishing is more than catching or not catching a fish. It's about being out by the water. It's soothing. The anticipation that the next cast might be the one, I guess, goes back to our ancestral roots, where that fish could be the difference between eating and starving. There's also not many moments in our lives these days we have time to listen to our thoughts without distractions. Watching TV or streaming a movie doesn't have the same effect. I really believe there is something in fishing and hunting that connects us to ourselves and to nature in a way that is healthy for us. Uh, just walked up there and I was like, right oh boys, gather round. And they just took one look at my biceps I shouldn't have bought this rod, this is just time wasting. Look at that mess. My regimental friends would not be impressed with the state of this. Let me tell you that. Cooking up a bloody storm. Just wanted to show you that it's not all nice creek walking. What of this? What of this business? With a heavy ass, heavy ass bag on back. Pretty knackered already, to be honest. Um, to leave the pack here and do a recce further up the creek, where it's a lot rockier. No, I think we'll put the pack on, cross over here, nice sandy bank all the way down. See if we can find something a little bit more hidden. I think it makes makes the most sense to cross. Okay, let's see if we can get through this. It's 
pretty deep. It's very deep. You all want to see a cool party trick? Time to test you out, mate. Super rough version, but I think it'll do the trick. These adventures always require me to be present in the moment. That's why starting a fire has a certain feel to it. It's a simple task that you can complete, and it rewards you not only with a feeling of success, but with its warmth and its entrancing display of flames and burning embers. We were taught this method of carrying your pack over the water in the military. It's called a mill float. It actually was a pain in the backside because your gear always got wet if you messed it up. Yeah, all thing good. Didn't let me down. <laughs> oh wow. How did I not see that before? Wonder if you could see them on the camera this whole time. Go out of tracks. I'll show ya. See so where he's walking this way. You can see his little claw marks and then his tail and body dragging. And he lives up in there somewhere. Seeing rubbish in wild places upsets me for a few reasons. The obvious reasons of pollution and potential harm to wildlife, and then a personal reason. I come out here to escape people, and then there it is, a sign of our lack of responsibility. Take it in, take it out. Come on lads, come on. Crap all around here. That's what I came to escape. Something I didn't expect to see. Right there, see a paw print. Anyway, look at this. Okay, so there's definitely bass in here. As soon as I looked over the edge of that big rock, there was like three of them just slowly moving away from the rock. So I think they were spooked already. Um, let's see how we go. I can get my shoes off. My old man used to take me fishing as a kid. 
either by means of canoe or winding our way around a trail in the bush somewhere. It always felt like we were on the other side of the earth. A real adventure. I don't know if I've caught a decent fish since those days. Maybe today will be my lucky day. Calm yourself, brother. This is an episode of a line. <laughs> oh, we did it. Well, it wasn't getting away hooking with both hooks. Massive. Right, gonna dispatch this fella, have him for dinner, for sure, or even lunch. I'm always grateful for a catch that will feed me. I don't think enough people understand this process. This is the balance of life. Nobody is mad when an animal takes another animal's life in order to survive, but we hate on one another for it. Like being human somehow makes us special. We're not. We're just as much a part of nature as anything else. I don't know if they've got some chucks in out. Except when goannas and wild dogs come out here. You know what I'm gonna be? Alright. Time to do some bushcraft. Bushcraft cooking with Matsy. Another goanna track going right towards where I put my fish. This isn't the stick that I'm going to use to hold the fish over the fire. I just need to get something to sit it on away from ants and whatnot. I will laugh if an eagle comes down and takes that. <laughs> she very well could do. Barker Laplander saw. This will work perfectly for the base of the fire. Catch and fish, no worries, bushcraft master. I've done two, two courses and I think I'm bloody John Wick of bushcraft. I've got a little bit of a sand barrier actually. Block out some of that wind. Because it's been in this valley, it's a little bit of a wind tunnel here, it's not so bad. I'll build it up if I need to. Get my little matchstick sizes. Definitely need more than that. All right, a moment I've been waiting for. Finally, get to test out my RMK Leatherworks fire kit. Australian leather, Australian made. Boots. Twist it up, whoa, it's so dry. I can't speak highly enough about bushcraft. Now, I know it's not for everyone, but if you're into camping, hiking and all round outdoor adventures, I strongly recommend you jump on a bushcraft survival course. I did my first course with Bushcraft Survival Australia and I felt like I had robbed myself of 30 years doing this stuff. There's something to be said for mastering the basics. A simple fire. Nothing huge and excessive, but it will offer me warmth, a place to cook, and it will fuel my imagination into the night as I stare into the flames as if it were a window into my own inner workings, pondering everything there is to ponder. It doesn't get much more in the moment than catching a fish from the river and cooking it over a fire you've just made. We all need to do more of this. Slow down time and appreciate what you have in front of you.
Well, I was going to save this cold one for later. But I mean, I don't, I don't think it really gets any more dramatic than this. So I just have it now, I think. I've got another one there when it gets a bit darker. They're quite potent, so maybe I should wait until I get the fish cooked. Who knows? Who knows? Double juicy, double juicy? Who am I, said dog? Double juicy IPA dipper by Bad Shepherd Brewing Company. Shout out to you boys, sick looking can, you bloody beauties. Cheers guys, cheers for catching a fish so quick. Let's see how the, uh, the boys do. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. One of the best parts about camping and being outdoors like this is it doesn't matter how much sand you've got in your boots <laughs> or how wet your underpants are. Oh my god, there is a giant something in the water, holy far out. Oh my god, it's an eel. Tell me you can see that. No. Look at far out. You cannot tell the size of this thing from here. That is over, that's over a meter long. What on earth? I was going to go for a swim. <laughs> wow. I don't even remember what I was saying. That eel just came out of nowhere. This is a wild place. Anyway, yeah, what was I saying before the eel? Oh yeah, I was just saying, it doesn't matter how like sandy your bloody socks are or how much, how wet your bloody underpants are. Because out here you just like that all the time. Am I talking absolute smackering? Maybe I do camp up here tonight, then I'm safe from whatever's in that swamp. getting there. Just about done. Fire's just died out. You look ready to me. I feel like I'm on a deserted island right now. Thank you buddy. Now you can just grab on the tail and peel it back basically. Oh, I'll show you. I'll show you this. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Time to eat. It doesn't get any better than fresh caught fish in fresh water like this. Just waiting for a guy to come up and try and fight me for it. I'll win. Have you ever tried um, fish cheek? If you crisp it up enough like this, it actually tastes like pork crackling. I kid you not. Pork crackling. About to say it's funny where I first walked down so many large birds so many noisy large birds and then I got further up here and there aren't so many but but the fish are bigger <laughs> birds don't know don't tell them bloody bear grills eat your heart out son come to Australia mate I'll knock you out
I don't have a fancy job that pays loads and I don't work from home. The only reason I'm able to come out here and make these videos is because I make the time. I wanted to put being outdoors, enjoying life at the top of my priorities list. Nobody is going to give you this time back. You need to take it now. I suppose some people might say sacrifice, but I really don't see it that way. Being in a place like this is priceless. We all get old eventually and you can't take that money with you. You need to make every moment count. I'm not waiting around to retire on my hard earned dollars to see these places. I'd rather cook over an open fire and listen to the birds than sit at a fancy table in a nice restaurant. Even TV is a bit like a distraction. It's like a running wheel in a mouse cage. You've got to make it your priority to get out here. Also doubles as kindling. Done. Easy. You can still see plenty of fish down there, hey. I was, I was gonna start telling you guys where I'm at with these locations I go to, which I, I do wanna do. As long as I'm not going to cause overcrowding or something, but but this spot, I can't. I don't think I can. Hey, it's too good. And there's fish. I'll think about it.
my good mate Craig from Mackenzie's Meats sent through some lamb cutlets which I'm going to cook up tonight. Just got some broccolini and some asparagus to go with it. I think it's time. It smells good. Even just raw like that, it smells so good. Just got three of these. And some of their bacon for the morning as well. Good thing about these is they don't take too long. I do around here, fire on everything. Like that. Veggies are cooked perfect, that's good, it's a good start. It's gonna be hot. Mate, these are unreal. So damn good. I'm not just saying you have to you have to try Mackenzie's meats out. Hormone free, pasture raised. All that good stuff. There goes that eel again. Alright team, I'm bloody knackered. I've jumped in the tent. Got a bit of a last hurrah fire out there. <sighs> anyway, I'll see you in the morning for a cook up. It's about quarter to seven now. Loads of fish jumping out there. So before I start the fire and make break here, I might go have another fish. Mornings out in the bush are the best. It's still and calm. You really get that feeling that a brand new day has just begun. We're a little bit robbed of this feeling when we wake up inside the walls of a house. Anyone who gets up earlier to go for a run, a surf, or train outside before heading to work will tell you that it's their favourite time of the day. There's a feeling in the crisp morning air, and something about the sun slowly making its way up into the sky that makes you feel positive about the day.
I come up and down this sand dune a couple times in the morning. Not cold anymore. Cheers guys, and cheers to Dog and Garn and Coffee Company. Ah, oh, for giving me life on this beautiful day. Just knock an ant in it. Not what I wanted. Oh, oh. cracked egg in there, mate. Too easy. Couple cherry tomatoes. Salt and pepper. Sorry about him. That was like a good bit. Mm -mm. Bloody hot out there now, super sunny. Anyway, I'm gonna tuck into this somehow. Mm. Been a great trip, hey? Couple of fish, awesome spot. Just so happy to be out here. I was at the tip the other day and just had this random thought of when did this start? When did we start just digging a massive hole and putting all our crap in it? I like I just can't imagine that would have been a big group decision to be made to go, yeah no well absolutely let's just dig a hole and put all our crap in it. <laughs> like at what stage were we building things or you know buying products like furniture and whatnot that we're going to stay in the family for a lifetime or even be passed down to the next generation. Yeah, at, at what point did we go from that to just every time you move houses you got to redecorate and sell your old couch and get a new one or you know all these IKEA flat packs and the furniture lasts like two years and then it's the legs are wobbling off it. Like I imagine that had a lot to do with it. Like, what's the end game there? <laughs> what's the end game with a tip?
There's a few places along the shore here where people have, you know, camped down their fires, which is all good, but then they've just left these big black scars where they've been camping, which is really obvious and just ruins the atmosphere, if you ask me. Leave no trace, fire's gone, bedding area's sorted, no trash. Let's go! There's always mixed emotions when I've packed up camp and I'm heading back to the vehicle to make my way home. A bit disappointed that I have to leave so soon and say goodbye to this peaceful environment to go navigate my way through incompetent drivers and multiple school zones that were an obvious afterthought given the amount of traffic they caused. But I also feel ready. Ready to see my partner and give her a big hug and a kiss, put my feet up and have a cuppa while we catch up over the last couple of days. What I learned most about my time out in the bush is that there needs to be a stronger balance. There are many wonderful modern things we have in this world, but we seldom have time to enjoy the natural wonders. It's out there that we recharge, we reflect, we simplify and find the ability to look at things from another perspective. We become present. Look at the size of that boy. Take it back to where it all began. The perfect purpose of life by the sand. Pulled me close and talked about the sky. Between you and I, I just go cook and leave a trail of mess. The way you hang out clothes don't make.